this week I've got something completely new on the channel because I'm going to be talking to a guest. Yes, I know, it's mad. Somebody has actually taken their, left their self-respect at the door and dropped their personal standards to such a level that they've agreed to come on and have a chat. So the person that I'm going to be talking to is called Ben Notley and he's got more running experience in his little finger than I've got in my entire excuse for a body. So let's run the chat now. Great to talk to Ben. I really hope you enjoy it. So hello Ben, thank you very much for agreeing to uh, come onto my humble channel for a chat. Hello. I have to say I think we have got the two ends of the running evolutionary scale here today. I think you are like the quantum computer of running and I'm like the like the caveman who's sitting there looking at the sticks waiting for someone to discover fire. So just to give you a viewers an idea, I mean recently you run the London Marathon and you did the uh, the New York City virtual marathon as well. I'm surprised yeah. that you're still vertical, frankly, after all of that. So thank you very much for coming along and joining us today. That's all right. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. The first question I wanted to ask you was really what got you into running. I've seen you've got your own YouTube channel. We'll talk about that a bit later on. And one of the things I've seen is like your dad was in with your New York City running thing, running along with you. And I've seen yeah. your little boy as well running in little videos yeah. which I think is so cute that's really really good so has it was it like a family thing is it something that you've grown up with yourself or what actually got you into this whole running lark so um running for me um started just before I had my first son Zachary so like you say you've seen him in a couple of my YouTube videos and um basically before I had him I wasn't very fit so I wanted to get fit in time for his birth so I thought, right, what can I do here? I don't want to join a gym because it's expensive. Football teams, it's hard to find places in, like around the local area. So I thought, running. My dad used to do a lot of running when I was younger. So growing up, um, I'd go and watch my dad a lot, do running races. He was into triathlons as well. So we'd go and watch him on the weekends. And it was quite inspirational to see, especially as a young boy. So I thought, you know what? Let's give some running a go. So Got into that, started off with like five Ks of every couple of days during the week and um, just whenever I could. And then just built up from there, basically, and then started the YouTube channel and um, took, off, took off from there, basically. Get, set myself some new challenges every week, just try and step it up, step it up as much as I can. And um, yeah, <laughs> just grew into what it is today. When I watch yeah. your... Uh, your channel and I watch the runs that you do I, it's very inspirational it's kind of where I think I'd, I'd love to get to if I get half as good as you sometime down the line I'll be very pleased with it oh, thanks yeah that, I mean that's what I wanted to do all along anyway is just to inspire someone else to give it a go the idea was to inspire my son but now it's on YouTube hopefully it'll reach a broader audience and you know other people will pick it up and uh, hopefully it will Get some other people running. That's the main main goal, I guess. Uh, this leads me on really nicely to my second question, really, which is I think if you run kind of 5K, maybe 10K, as I do, I don't think you can kind of wing it, really. I don't think you need to necessarily put a lot of effort into the planning. You can almost just kind of go out there and do it. But at yeah. some point, you do need to start thinking about other things like, I don't know, maybe diet or, or um, exercise, like uh, preparation after the cooling down, all that kind of stuff. And there's probably a tipping point with that at some point. I think it's probably just after 10K maybe, but uh, yeah. what do you think about it? And what do you think is important to think about to kind of avoid picking up injuries and that kind of thing? Um, I think in terms of preparation and getting ready to actually do an event, it's sort of, I think there comes a point where you, you get comfortable with certain distances. So for me, I would say, anything up to sort of 10 miles, 16K, I probably wouldn't take any sort of fuel. I would just have water just to keep me hydrated and keep me ticking over. But for certain, for others, it would be certain, it would be less. So it's all about practicing and finding out what's comfortable for you. But also, I suppose another factor is what you want to get out of running. So for example, if you were just gonna run a 5K, yeah, you could just go out the door and do it and just plod along. But if you were going to go really hard and race a 5K, then you might need to think a little bit more about strategy and fueling. 
for example, and that's where you might need some gels, even though it is such a short distance. So, would you, are there any other things like sort of um, other types of training you think might be a good thing to do? So, like for example, in the past, I've looked at uh, sort of interval training. I did a little bit of, and I'm not sure what what's good to do. I've heard the fartlek. I tried. Have you heard of that with the old yeah, fartlek yeah, and the old yeah, the old just kind of go? And I quite like that because the sort of the bit of me that just kind of wants to wing it quite enjoyed that. Anybody who doesn't know, I did a video on fartlek. I'll link to it below but the basic premise is you kind of go out and you just sort of almost wing it you kind of see something oh yes i'll i'll pick up distance here until that lamppost 300 yards away or something and then you slow down a bit and then you speed up oh i'll speed up down there a bit so it's more than somebody telling you i'll oh, do this it's yeah. more kind of making it up um so i mean are, are those sort of good things to do would you would you think is it kind of interval training quite a good thing to do yeah i, I would say 100 percent um it's brilliant for building speed fartlek is fantastic i like like you, I don't like the structure of an interval session where you like, oh, I've got to do 600 meters hard and then a minute slow. I would much rather be like, oh, I'm going to run to, yeah, like you say, that lamppost and then sprint for 10 seconds or whatever and then slow it down like, and just make it up as you go along. Just have fun because it, at the end of the day, for me, that's what running's about. And for same for a lot of people. And if you're not, if you don't like the regimented, way that an interval session is built then just go out and do some fart legs you get the same benefits from it but it's all up to you how how seriously you take it you know so yeah 100 percent, i'd give that a go another yeah. thing that i will mention is strength exercises if you're going for a lot of distance i mean particularly i'd noticed when i started increasing my distance up towards sort of like 50k and beyond my stomach muscles like really really hurt like my my ribs were in absolute agony so anything to work on your core muscles and maybe sort of like your shoulders and arms as well because it's not something you think about too much when you're doing shorter distances but especially if you're going for the longer distances like marathon and ultra distances maybe try and focus on something doing your core like sit-ups and things like that so that's also quite good to uh, give that a go as well okay that's really helpful actually that's really interesting because i think that's a, the one thing that kind of worries me a little bit uh, when thinking about doing these slightly longer distances i'll never go ultra i'm never going to do anything like that well i must say to the viewers actually when Ben did the um the new york city virtual marathon you didn't stop at 42k I mean, at the end of that day you've done something like 54 haven't you just for like, just was like yeah. this is just mad i don't do that in a month what about something I've heard people talk a lot about, but I don't really understand the concept. I sort of vaguely understand it, but I, I, I really need a Janet and John guide, which is a, the sort of zonal running. You see people often will post on social media, oh, I did this in zone one and this in zone two. What on earth is it? For those of us who've got the running knowledge of a four-year-old, what is zonal running and what should we be doing it? Um, yes, basically. I think I, I'm a big believer in it. Um, when I start, everyone pretty much starts the same, I would imagine. Um, I know this is how I did, and I'm sure you'll tell me if it's how you started. But I just, when I started running, I went out the door and just ran as hard as I could because I thought I've got to go as fast as I can because that's going to get me the, bet, the, the quickest fitness gains possible because that's how you think. Running is fast. So surely that's how it must work. But once I'd learned that I need to slow down to make sure that my heart can cope with the stress of running and basically build a base level of fitness. That's when it sort of changed. And that gives, gives most people the ability to go farther without feeling so much fatigue because your heart's not pumping as hard and you just build up that sort of resilience to the, the stress of running and it enables you, to, the faster you go, your heart rate to stay lower, basically. So the zones are going to be different for each different person, I suppose. Um, what I, what my heart rate zones are not going to be the same to you. Um, but you can do tests. Like if you have certain smart watches, they do have things on there that basically will tell you what your heart rate zones are. So if you are thinking about getting into it, um, a good sports watch will definitely help. And also a heart rate monitor. I mean, the heart rate monitor is not. 100% necessary, but it's more accurate than what you'll get on your wrist. So if you're seriously wanted to get into it, definitely way to go with a heart monitor. Um, but yeah, zone two running is definitely fantastic. And that's basically easy running. I would probably say maybe three out of the five runs a week, you'd want to do easy zone two, just really, really chilled. That's the funnest type of running as well. <laughs> just taking it easy, just enjoying the miles and having fun. So yeah. Zone two running, I would definitely recommend for everyone.
Okay, so that's sort of similar to kind of the 80-20 thing you're talking about there, sort of. So, yeah, because yeah, that, yeah. that's something I've tried in the past. I can't say I've, I would say that I've added it up and gone, oh, yes, this percentage of this. I've just kind of gone out and yeah. gone, well, I've done a few runs slow. Now I'll do a quick one. And I thought well, that's probably 80-20. Yeah. But uh, and I found that's that right. that 20, I almost sort of feel like I can't stop myself from going that faster rate when I've done a few slower runs. As I say, maybe if you're doing five runs a week, three of them in that low heart rate zone too, and then say you do your fart leg day one day and that you might see an increase in your heart rate because you put in those faster efforts. Um, so that one day, and then maybe you might do some sort of really short distance sort of sprint intervals where you sort of only go out and do sort of like 2K or something, but you sort of go really, really hard. Okay, that's really interesting because I'm trying to build up. I've let the number of runs drop down far too much actually at the moment. And I'm trying to sort of build that back up again at the moment. And I think that variety will help because I think going out and just doing the same thing all the time it's just going to not be much fun to be perfectly honest with you so um yeah. what you're talking about there makes a lot of sense I really, really yeah like it's it. good to mix it up it keeps things exciting so tell us a little bit about this um these the, we needed the london marathon how had you done a marathon before that i've only been watching your channel for the last few months so i, I don't know sort of back beyond that was that your first marathon or had you done long you mentioned ultra before so i'm imagining you've done a yeah. lot of long distances prior um, to that so London for me was my first official marathon, um, actual race. Um, prior to that, I had done some other marathons virtually um, and also covered marathon distance sort of just in training for other things. Um, in terms of ultras, I, obviously I have done over marathon distance, but again, I haven't done anything official. Everything I've done has been all sort of virtual events or just go out with friends and just go out for a run and get lost and uh, <laughs> try and find your way back kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, London was the first official marathon for me. I bet that was fantastic though, quite an occasion. I mean, your video, and again, we'll post a link to your channel below. Um, and Ben's got a fantastic video about the London Marathon. If you're like me, you've kind of watched it on the TV, it's all very official with the cameras and all the rest of it. It's great to watch it from somebody who's actually in the race. And uh, just seeing that as well, um, and seeing your thoughts as you went along is, is really, I found it so inspiring. And that's kind of what led me to think, oh, that's, a, that's a, like a bucket list goal for me, like way down. Whether I'd ever get there, I don't know. But watching your video, it, doesn't, it, it isn't half inspiring when you see somebody do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it really was. It's completely different to what you see on TV. Obviously, everyone knows about London Marathon and there's all the people and stuff. But you, you can't until you experience the crowd and being surrounded by it. It's yeah, it's just a completely different yeah thing altogether. So, yeah, I hope you can get there, Andy. I hope you can. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, there's no harm in, in aiming big, is there? So, um, but yeah, That's it's, right. I'd put the name down for a half um next year and uh locally and we'll just kind of see i'm just kind of a bit like you said it, it's important not to put pressure on yourself isn't it and just kind of yeah. just sort of go with the flow flow and, and have fun and yeah learn at your own rate is there anything else that you if you wanted to give like one major tip and say well if i had to tell particularly like new ones get a lot of new ones watching the channel and if you wanted to give like one particular tip and say well you know, forget everything just do this i'll put you on the spot a bit here i realize that but um yeah. you know is there anything that you would say is a, like a big overriding tip for someone I, I would say don't compare yourself to others if you're on strava and social media and stuff don't be like oh look what that person's doing i've got to do this to be like that just everyone's different and everyone has their own thing like i'm always comparing myself and i just know i've just said that i don't want anyone to do it but it's really difficult so just take everyone just take your own time the fitness will come as i say stick to that zone two running three out of five days a week just chill relax enjoy running as much as you can and then you'll get the gains over time it's not gonna you're not gonna flick a switch and you're gonna be like superman the next day just take it easy, enjoy yourself, don't compare yourself to others, and everyone has their own journey, so just have fun with running, basically. That's yeah. brilliant advice, I like, that's, that's really good, I like that. I mean, at the end of the day, the clock is the best thing to beat. Like, don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Like, unless you're an elite athlete, you really don't need to worry. Like, every day, Joe's like, me and you, we just go out, have fun, and do the best we can, and that's, that's what all that matters. Thanks so much, Ben, for, for your insights there. I found that really useful and I love watching your channel. So do tell everybody a little bit about your channel. They might not have seen it. I'm going to put a link in the video description below, but just a quick introduction to, to what you do on your channel. 
Um, so basically my videos on my channel, um, uh, running videos, obviously, um, but they're not like um, everyone else has a lot of shoe reviews and things like that. Mine's more about sharing my experiences of running. So all the events that I go out and do and all the training that I'm doing for those events. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in sort of joining someone's actual journey in terms of running, it's a good place to start. So yeah, I'd love you to come and check me out if you can. <laughs> go and check out Ben's channel. I love watching it. It's a really good view. So please do check it out. Right. Thanks a lot. And thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and have a chat with us. I really appreciate it. A lot of really good advice there. I've certainly taken on board some things that I'll be thinking about as I go on my latest challenge. Um, and of course, I'll be giving updates on that in the videos over the coming weeks. So thank you very much for your time, Ben. So much appreciated. You're welcome. Anytime. Anytime. So thanks so much again to Ben for taking the time out of his busy schedule to have a chat. He's got a young family, so it's so nice of him to talk. In fact, he said that he'd be willing to come on and have a chat again in the future. He's clearly had a bang on the head or something. So if you've got any questions you'd like me to pose to Ben, our running expert, then please do leave them in the comments, send me a message, and maybe we'll do that in the future sometime. Down in the comments, uh, leave your thoughts I really would love to know what you think and right down below the like button there are links to all the things that we talked about Ben's channel and uh, various videos and all that kind of thing so thank you so much for watching next week the video is going to be a bit different again so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to find out what that's all about thanks so much for watching see you next week